Russia is suffering enormous losses of personnel in the hottest direction in the Donetsk region. Hospitals overflow with Russian wounded soldiers, according to the Atesh Partisan Movement. An agent from the 30th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade reported catastrophic losses for the aggressor in the Pokrovsk direction. Every day, brigades set new records. In just one day, up to 50 individuals in their brigade are wounded or killed. Hospitals and medical facilities are overwhelmed, forcing the urgent discharge of civilians to make room for injured invaders. This information was confirmed by an agent among the medical staff of one of the hospitals in the temporarily occupied Makiivka. According to him, the occupation authorities continue to ignore the needs of civilians to save their soldiers. Ukrainians are being evicted from hospitals to admit Russian soldiers, the report states. Moscow's losses both in equipment and personnel only continue to grow as it advanced in the western Donetsk region, an onslaught against Ukraine's defended positions that contributed to the heavy toll in September. In early October, two key Ukrainian frontline towns, Volodar and Rovdivka, fell to Russia during its advance towards Pokrovsk. Despite the heavy equipment losses, Russian forces have yet to make concrete tactical gains in the region. Russian forces have also lost rockets, anti-aircraft systems and drones in its offensive along the Eastern Front. This is a breakdown of the heavy losses that could jeopardize Russia's ability to expand its battlefield gains. Ukrainian military expert Lieutenant General Ihor Romanenko says that the primary target of the Russian aggressor's army remains Pokrovsk in Donetsk region. The occupiers are trying to encircle the city. According to him, the invaders have not stopped after capturing Volodar. They are trying to advance to the second defensive line of the armed forces of Ukraine, located 8 kilometers to the north. On the other side, they are moving north to direct forces towards Kurakov and then Pokrovsk. So, if capturing Pokrovsk from the front has not been successful, they will organize a slow encirclement from the south and north. Essentially, they are aiming for an operational encirclement. In popular terms, this is called a pocket, Romanenko said. The military expert noted that a few weeks ago, defense forces deployed three brigades, which allowed them to stop and slow the occupiers' advance on Pokrovsk. Pokrovsk, a once vibrant city of 80,000 people, is the object of a Russian encircling move that began in July and is creeping within miles of the city as every day passes. The city has served as a key logistics and transportation hub for Ukrainian military operations in eastern Ukraine and is the gateway to conquering the rest of Donetsk Oblast and potentially onto even bigger prizes such as Dnipro, Ukraine's fourth largest city before the war. Hurricane Milton plowed into Florida as a Category 3 storm Wednesday, bringing misery to a coast still ravaged by Helene, pounding cities with winds of over 100 miles per hour after producing a barrage of tornadoes, but sparing Tampa a direct hit. Meteorologists believe at least 38 tornadoes could be associated with Milton. The National Weather Service is in the process of reviewing the preliminary reports, a process that could take weeks according to National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration research staff. Yet on Wednesday, the Weather Service issued 126 tornado warnings in the state. Before Milton even made landfall, tornadoes were touching down across the state. The Spanish Lakes Country Club near Fort Pierce, on Florida's Atlantic coast, was hit particularly hard, with homes destroyed and some residents killed. When the review is complete, the storm could crack the all-time top 10 list of hurricanes responsible for creating the most tornadoes.